Hello everyone, I made this video for beginners and intermediate users of Excel, who is using macro written by someone else. In this tutorial, I am going to teach you how to set up Excel for using Excel macros, how to create new macros or function, and how to review macros written by someone else. Before starting this tutorial, let me make one thing clear. This is not programming tutorial. I just want you to be more comfortable while using those macros. I want you to understand how everything works. I really hate it when people just mindlessly use macro without knowing what's happening behind the scenes. So I am going to teach you how to check out code of your macro to understand how it's working. Now let's start with fresh excel sheet. First thing we need to do is enable developer tab which is hidden by default. So just move your cursor to excel ribbon, right click on it and choose customize ribbon. And you can enable developer tab by checking this checkbox. Click ok and now we can see developer tab on our ribbon. One more thing we need to do is also adjust macro settings. Here, just make sure to select Disable VBS Macros with Notification. If you need more info about all these settings, then let me know in the comments. So by default, Excel don't store macro inside Excel file. We have to tell Excel that this is macro enable file. So if we just directly save this file, Microsoft will automatically save it as a Excel workbook by default, which don't contain any macro. So if you want to save macro inside your excel file, then you must save it as a excel sm file. Okay, otherwise excel will remove all the code after saving. You can see two different files here, one is without macro and one is with the macro. Okay, so one more thing, so when you download any files from internet, Microsoft normally automatically block all the macros from this file. So you can see it you will be able to see this warning whenever you open this excel sheet to get rid of this error what you need to do is open file properties and click on this unlock to unlock all the macros so now if we open this file again you can just enable macros by clicking on this button Now let me just show you what all this button on developer step. So here in this group we are only going to focus on visual basic and macro button ok. So there is also option to record macro inside excel but I normally don't prefer it. If you really want to learn how to use or modify code just focus on manually written macro. This is default view of our visual basic editor ok. So panel on the left here is called project explorer which display all the file related to this VBA project. If this is not enabled by default what you can do is go to the view menu and just enable it from there. Now let me just click on the file inside this explorer. So you can see there are two files already there sheet1 and this workbook. You can just directly add code inside this file or we can add new module here ok so we are going to add our code to this module this will help us keep our code separated from our excel file we can also change the name of this module using properties window ok so just click on the module and from properties windows we are going to change this module name to my macro Now let me just write our first macro, ok, so this will be very basic one, just a hello message. Now if you want to run this macro, all you need to do is click inside this macro and just click on this run sub, ok, so it will run this macro. 
Now, what if we want to run this macro from our Excel file? For that, we need to use this macro button. And by clicking on this run button, you will be able to run this macro. You can also click on this edit button to directly go to your macro code. You can go to the options and assign the keyboard shortcuts from here. So I'm going to assign Ctrl Shift G to run our new macro here. So I'm pressing Shift and G from my keyboard. Now if I press Ctrl Shift G on my keyboard, Excel will automatically trigger this macro. Now let's just use button to trigger this macro. So for that we are going to insert new shape here and just name it click me and let's just do the formatting as you like okay so now to assign macro just right click on this button and choose assign macro So now when you click on this button, it will trigger our hello macro. You can also create new button using this VBA control. Okay, so there are two buttons here, but just use this bottom one. Okay, there is not much difference between these two in real life. To change the name of the button, we need to open properties window. Now just click on this button and change the caption of this button as per your requirement. You can also change the fonts and font size from here. Now to assign our macro to this button, just double click on this button. So this will automatically create this uh, private macro. If you want to run our hello macro with this, we need to call our macro using this syntax. Name of our module and then name of our macro separated by period. So currently our Excel is in design mode, we just need to disable design mode by clicking on this button here. Okay, so now if we click on this test button, it will trigger our hello micro. Additionally, we can also use irregular shape as a button to trigger our macro. Let's go back to our VB editor. We already have one sub written. Let's write another small function. I am just writing simple add function which will take two inputs and return some of that inputs. This is called user defined function. You can use it just like any other actual function. There is not much difference. Let's go back to our Excel sheet and paste this function. So you can see it's very easy to use. It has same functionality like any other Excel function. Let me try a few more things with this. and it's working as expected. Adding one more function to calculate area of circle. It's taking radius as an input and returning circle area. Let's try it out on Excel sheet to see if it's working correctly.
This is just one simple example, but we can use this for complex math calculation or replacement for complex Excel formulas or build formulas that are not available in Excel. Now that we know how to use new macro and function, next step is to learn how to analyze existing macro to understand how it's working. To learn debugging, I am adding new macro to calculate area of cycle. Here we are getting various input from Excel A1 cell and printing results in B1 cell. So when we run this macro, you can see area of cycle in B2 cell. We can also assign this macro to this smiley. Now let me show you how to debug this macro. So according to Google, debugging is a process of identifying and removing errors from computer software. We are not learning this to find problems in our macro, but to understand what it's doing and how. Now first, click inside of your macro and from debug menu, just click on step into. Alternatively, we can also press F8 button to trigger this command. So this command will help us going through this entire macro line by line. Now if I press F8 again, macro will move to second line. Skipping first line because it only contain variable declaration. If I keep pressing F8, then it will keep going till end of this macro. Now, during debugging, if we move our cursor to the specific line, we can see value behind this variable. Range A1 value is 1 and radius value is 0 because this line is not executed yet. Now if you move to the next line, you can see radius value is 1. Same thing for pi value and for area. And in the end, we are just updating b1 value using area variable. Now if we go one step further, we can add trick points. So we don't have to go through each line of macro. To add break point, just click on this left side and now we have breakpoint on this line. You can use breakpoints to pause script at specific line. So you can observe all variables or any calculation at that point. Now if we run this again, it will stop at this breakpoint. You can click on run button to execute this or stop button to cancel this macro. Break points are great to observe specific calculation in this macro. For smaller macro, it doesn't matter much, but for the larger macro, you have to go through each line. This can be tedious when you have hundreds or thousands of lines of code. There are few more ways to observe all variables. Go to view and select local window. Now, if we run this macro, you will be able to see all the loaded variables and its current value in this window. Pressing F8 to go to the next line and you can see values are getting updated. This will save you a lot of time when you need to figure out or fix some calculation. Similar to local window, there is also watch window. Again, go to view menu and select watch window. Only difference here is that you have to select which variable you want to observe. Let me show you. Just right click on any variable you want to observe and select add to watch. So it's showing out of context because macro is not running. If we run this macro, area value is now zero. Now going to the next line, Area value is 3.14. One last concept in debugging. 
I am adding one extra line of code here to print value of area at end of this macro. So for this we need immediate window. Go to view menu and select immediate window. This is my personal favorite tool to use in VBA editor. Now when we run this macro, value of area will get printed in immediate window. So this way we can print any variable we like during our macro execution without disturbing macro code. Now to explain this further, I am adding one more macro to print numbers. This macro will loop through number 1 to 10 and print results in multiplier of 10. Now let's go through this code line by line. You can see these values in immediate windows. We are almost done here. Just one last small thing. Most people don't take this feature very seriously, but this is most important. Adding comments in our code. It's like your personal notes in between code to understand why you did this calculation. For VBA, any line that start with apostrophe is considered as a comment. VBA will just ignore those lines during macro execution. Using comments, we can also add some notes this way to understand what each macro is doing or to add notes inside our code to understand its calculation. This way, even if you see this code after few years, you will remember what code is doing. It's like documentation for our code. I know there is lot more things to know about macro, but I think this basic stuff everyone should know if they are working with macro enable files. One more thing to keep in mind that to always keep copy of your excel file if you are going to tinker with macro just to be safe. So this is it. If you have any other question regarding macro or any other settings, please let me know in the comments below. I will be happy to help. Bye.